Welcome everyone uh, to the Better Business Bureau. My name is Jim Hegarty. I'm the president of the regional Better Business Bureau headquartered uh, here in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, today uh, we have called you here to announce uh, the, the findings of an international investigation that was conducted by BBB's International uh, Investigation Initiative. Uh, and uh, the head of that was Steve Baker. Uh, he was uh, the key investigator in this study. Uh, and this particular study uh, was designed uh, to dig into the details of what has become an uh, international epidemic of tech support scams. Uh, the, the study, which all of you now have, uh, the key findings essentially say that consumers are lured into this scheme uh, by really four separate ways, either a pop-up ad on their computer, and I believe that Jeff is going to show you uh, a sample of this, an unsolicited phone call from a, tech, a technician claiming to have detected problems with the user's computer, and in most cases uh, that is an imposter claiming to be with Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft has reported to us uh, that they receive 12,000 calls a month into their office from consumers who are informing them that they've been contacted by one of their employees, and obviously it's not true because they don't make calls like that. Uh, most people lose money uh, through the use of credit cards or debit cards. 55% uh, are checks, 36% are the second most common form of payment. Uh, the problem is worldwide, uh, with U.S. residents accounting for 33.6% of all victims, and the scam is also quite popular in Australia, uh, with 25% of the victims coming from there, and Singapore, 22%. Uh, uh, studies show that 85% of the scams come from India uh, and less than 10% of the scammers operate inside the U.S. According to the FBI, U.S. consumers lost more than $21 million to this scheme in the first nine months of 2017, and that's clearly a very low number because probably the thing of most concern about this scam is it is massively underreported. Um, it's one of the only crimes that I've ever become aware of where victims have no idea uh, that they have become part of a scheme. Uh, most people make these calls to the imposters, they allow them into their system, uh, they pay to have a problem that never existed repaired, uh, and then the biggest problem, well there's two real significant problems. First of all, they've given their credit cards uh, to some bad actors, and secondly, uh, they've allowed people into their systems, and those people generally will reside in their system with low and slow malware that's designed to detect all of their movements over a period of months. So as they log on to their online accounts, check their bank accounts, uh, the scammers are able to detect their logins, their passwords, etc. And we know that there are certainly individuals that have reported massive losses, uh, but generally the losses that are reported to us are in this $250 to $500 range. Uh, so today we have with us Wayson Dunn, who is the former head of the FBI office here in Omaha. Uh, the FBI has an overwhelming uh, workload right now uh, with some pretty significant cases that all of you are aware of. Uh, and so Wayson has agreed uh, to make some comments. Wayson now works in the private sector uh, in the cybersecurity industry. Uh, we have uh, two individuals uh, that have actually been victimized by this scam. Uh, we have Sally Komrovsky and Janice, uh, Janice Mulhoff, and they'll be speaking to you uh, briefly. We do want to play for you uh, a couple, we'll just show you a pop-up uh, that it would be common for people to see on their screen. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the whole secret to the sauce in this scam is that phone number right there. Uh, the, the, the bottom line with these scammers is that they want to talk to you. Um, and once they get you on the line, they can begin to convince you that this is a real problem, uh, that they've detected malware operating in your system that could cause you harm, uh, and they want to get that fixed for you. You call that number, and then they're going to hand you off to tech support people that are going to fix your problem, but it isn't going to be free. And of course, it's going to involve you <coughs> giving them credit card information to make payment uh, for a problem that does not exist. Or uh, you may hear something like this actually coming through uh, your computer, and I think our victims will tell you that that's the experience that they had. 
Camera number two, six, eight, D, three. Critical alert from Microsoft. Your computer has alerted us that it is infected with the virus and spyware. This virus is sending your credit card details, Facebook login, and personal emails to hackers remotely. Please call us immediately at the toll-free number listed, so that our support engineers can walk you through the removal process over the phone. If you close this page before calling us, we will be forced to disable your computer to prevent further damage to our network. And then here's another example. Corporation has stopped the Windows services in your computer. To renew the Windows license key, please call 805-314-0727. Let me repeat. This is very important call to notify you that your Microsoft Windows license key has been expired in your computer. So Microsoft Corporation has stopped the Windows services in your computer. To renew the Windows license key, please call 805-314-0727. I will repeat, 805-314-0727. So this problem, uh, we believe, is so significant uh, and so uh, it has reached a proportion where the consuming public is so uninformed uh, that we felt uh, that this is just something that needs to get out in mass. Uh, so we are conducting this press conference simultaneously with BBBs in Chicago, Dallas, San Francisco, and St. Louis uh, with a goal uh, that this story will reach millions of viewers, uh, millions of readers, uh, and hopefully, particularly now, with so many people at their computers shopping for Christmas, uh, that we can eliminate some of the potential damage uh, that this crime poses. So I'd like to introduce uh, right now uh, Mr. Wason Dunn, again, former head of the FBI office here in Omaha, to make a few comments, and then we'll bring up our victims and you can hear their stories. Wason? Okay. Thank you. Well, the issue of cybercrime and cyber scams is something that is continually evolving. I've been involved with uh, investigations or overseeing investigations of these matters for well over a decade. And I can tell you that the bad guys are constantly coming up with new and more innovative ways to victimize people. And it's a constant challenge for law enforcement and other agencies to keep up. Uh, but a concerted effort is always ongoing to make sure law enforcement stays abreast of the most recent scams. One of the key things, though, is for people to be aware of what the scams are, and that's why it's so important what the Better Business Bureau is doing. Awareness is probably the most important thing uh, for a consumer because knowing what the scams are, knowing what tends to be circulating at any point in time, is one of the best ways to prevent being victimized. The other thing that I would encourage all people to do, in addition to awareness, is simply to have uh, uh, an up-to-date virus scanner and an up-to-date firewall on your computer. If you have a good firewall and a good virus scanner, then you should be able to have some confidence that your computer has not been compromised. And you also need to know that no legitimate software company is going to reach out to a consumer either by a phone call, a pop-up ad, or an email to tell you your computer has been compromised. So if you trust your own virus scanner and it's not telling you you have a problem, then don't fall for the phone call, don't fall for a pop-up ad, or an email. Because again, no legitimate software company is going to do that. Uh, legitimate companies are going to rely on you to have a good virus scanner and a good firewall and that you will know when you have a problem and you will reach out for the appropriate people to fix that. The other thing I would like to emphasize is that reporting these crimes when you are victimized is very important. In many cases, the individual loss may not result in an actual investigation because, frankly, uh, law enforcement resources cannot respond individually to every single victim. However, reporting these crimes is important because if it becomes apparent that it is part of an organized enterprise or that there are a series of linked crimes from various places around the country or around the world, those are the circumstances which do allow law enforcement agencies to get involved. 
Uh, one of the best ways to report this sort of crime, if you're a victim, is to notify, to file a report with the Internet Crime Complaint Center. It's IC3, Internet Crime Complaint Center. Uh, it is an online service run by the FBI which tabulates and correlates uh, victim reports from around the country. And again, when it becomes apparent there is a pattern, when there is something that law enforcement can pursue, they will do so, even though they may not be able to respond to each individual victim. So other than the reporting, uh, the awareness is critical, and, and for that I really thank the Better Business Bureau for what they're doing now, because making sure consumers are aware of this sort of scam and what can they can potentially do to prevent being victimized is the best prevention. Thank you. Any questions for Wilson? How, when you were with the FBI, the percentage of resources that, that the FBI has to uh, allocate to try to investigate these things? Can you answer that? Well, <clears throat> cybercrime is now the third highest national priority for the FBI. So, uh, when warranted, considerable resources are in fact devoted. Uh, it's both a challenge and an opportunity. The challenge, of course, is the criminal oftentimes is in a remote location. Oftentimes it's overseas. I've been involved with a number of cases where even though we were able to develop evidence of the crime and show who did it, the criminals were beyond reach because they were in countries which would not extradite. However, uh, knowing who is behind it, uh, we still file charges and if they ever end up in a country where they are extraditable, those sorts of criminals will be brought to justice. But in terms of resources, uh, it's a tremendous amount. Again, it's, it's the third highest national priority. I can tell you that every field office, every FBI field office in the country now has some form of a cybercrime task force active. Uh, certainly the uh, field office here in Omaha has a very active cybercrimes task force. Thank you. Um, is, is India one of those states, uh, countries that does not uh, extradite people for a crime like this? Uh, in, India is, uh, it, it's case by case basis. Uh, it's really more of some of the former um, Soviet bloc, some of the Eastern European countries that absolutely will not extradite. Um, India, it, it depends. I don't know if you, you, if you touched on this, but as far as what as Jim mentioned, as far as it's, it's very underreported. Why is that so uh, so underreported? Why are people not catching on to the um, catching on to this? Well, it's a combination of things. First of all, sometimes people may not realize they've been victimized. Uh, you know, if they pay the two hundred dollars or whatever is being requested, and their computer is unlocked they may not realize they were victims of crime. In those cases where they do realize they were victimized, uh, oftentimes it's a combination of embarrassment, not wanting to report it, not wanting to admit that you were a victim of a scam, or sometimes it's simply a matter of not knowing who to call. Uh, again, as I indicated, in, uh, the best place to report it is the Internet Crime Complaint Center, because depending on where you reside, calling the local police may or may not get you any kind of a response. Now in Omaha, the local police department is very sophisticated and they do know how to respond to calls regarding cyber crimes, but there are many jurisdictions where the department would not be equipped to deal with that, so that contributes to the underreporting as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I think it is also critical for, for local consumers in their local markets, particularly if they've used their credit card uh, to uh, to make the payment to the scammers that, and they find out that they were a part of a scheme to file a police report uh, because that will help them as they dispute the charges with their credit card company and in fact many credit card companies will demand that they have a police report filed and our Omaha de Police Department uh, is very adept at this uh, and they are, they are certainly standing by to help people that have uh, been a part of this. Another uh, good reporting mechanism, IC3, is obviously the ideal, uh, but BBB Scam Tracker may be something that's very easy for people to remember. BBB Scam Tracker, uh, it allows you to report crimes real time. We have a heat map uh, that any consumer can pull up at any time of the day or night. They can see the kinds of crimes that are occurring in their neighborhoods at any given moment in time. And we share all of the data that comes from BBB Scam Tracker with the FTC, with FBI, uh, it all goes to the Consumer Sentinel, IC3 gets access to that, uh, so it's just another way. Uh, if it's difficult to remember IC3, you could remember BBB Scam Tracker, and that's another great way uh, to report this crime. 
Uh, and so I think what we'll do now is bring up uh, to the podium uh, Sally uh, Komrovsky. Uh, and Sally was an individual um, who can tell you a little bit about what it's like uh, to have a personal uh, upfront experience with this crime. Good morning. I was scammed back in March of this past year. I was reading an article on my computer and it started talking to me, which scared me to death. My computer had never spoke to me before. Um, they tried to entice me to, you know, give money or whatever, but I was to call a number and I did. And so they had control of my computer. But after a short while, um, I just kept questioning them. This gentleman had a foreign accent. He said he was from Microtech and I kept saying, are you with Microsoft? And he said, oh no, we're just a subsidiary. So I was very confused about that. So I finally decided I wasn't going to go any further and I said, I'm going to talk to my own computer person and um, my son-in-law. And so I tried to get off my computer and I couldn't. So I had to end up unplugging my computer because they did have it control my computer. Um, and after I did that, I called my computer person and he took it and had it for two weeks. So I was without my computer for two weeks. I did not give my credit card number, but I did have an expense with my own, you know, software person. So, and I was without my computer, so that um, was difficult for me. <laughs> and I guess that's the main thing. And I did know at that same time, a lot of people in my church um, were being scammed. So I think there was just a real push at that time, but I think I may have been the only person that reported it. And how did you report it? I, um, I talked to a niece, and um, then I decided that I would just call the Better Business Bureau, and then they gave me the, um, you know, the scam, I, tracker. scam tracker, and then I filled out a form and reported it that way. And then Steve Baker had called me off and on during this past year to get more information. Very good. So, um, did, did people need out, to report it. Did you ever figure out how they happened to get your uh, computer and send No, you I was just reading an article and I was, I thought I clicked on read more, you know, how you're reading articles. Uh, I was on Facebook but trying to read an article that enticed me and, and it apparently enticed me. <laughs> but it was a regular just, like, just like the rest of them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you were on the phone with this person, mm -hmm. what, were they t what were they telling you was wrong with your the, your computer? What the first thing you have, you? my computer said you have a serious virus, you know, and then call this number immediately. So I did, and then they just told me that um, I had a serious virus, and that um, they could, if I would pay a fee, they would go ahead and um, t do that, and each month they would check my computer for this fee, and I think it was $200 for one year, 300 for three, and 500 for five, or something like that. But um, I just didn't feel comfortable, so I didn't pursue it. it you didn't even give them a card number or I did or not, like no. But I couldn't get off my computer, and I couldn't disconnect. I had to hang up the phone, and then I just reached down and unplugged my I didn't know what else to do. So I'm sure a lot of people that are my age, um, they're just, you know, what do I do? And, and your sister talked to other people who had it happen but didn't report? They didn't. And I, you know, I've asked, why didn't you? And, you know, they just didn't do it. So they paid, and I don't know if there's, you know, if the companies that they, I never asked what companies they, you know, were dealing with. They, well, well, some of them ended up actually paying. They did. How, how have you used this information going forward? With, with um, look at the when I'm on the computer, if I'm reading an article, I do not read more. No matter how <laughs> enticed I am, I do not read more. I'm afraid I'm going to drag or hit something, you know. I do not read more. So if, I, if it's something interesting, I'll ask one of my children, did you read that article? <laughs> and that's how I find out more information. But um, it's, it's very scary. And the older you are, you know, I think it's, it's like, what in the world, you know? 
in all my working days, you know, I mainly did word processing, but, you know, you learned how to do things on the computer, and boy, when it talks to you, that's a little bit scary. So what's your advice to everybody? Um, if you are scammed, try to get off immediately. If, if need be, unplug your computer and report it. And I would say here locally, report it to the Better Business Bureau. It's probably easier to remember. How much time do you say you spend on the computer? Oh, on, each on a day. day or on a week? Oh, I, I don't do a lot of Facebook and other things, but I am secretary for two organizations. So I'm on that a lot, and then sending things electronically. I would say in a week, probably 20 hours or more. It's about like working. <laughs> I don't think I have Very any good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Wason. Okay, and now we're going to bring up uh, Janice Mohoff uh, to share uh, her experience with you, Janice. So, I should really know better. <laughs> when I was in the military, I had all the cybersecurity classes. Um, I really should have known better. But when something takes over your computer unexpectedly, um, and it takes you off guard, and it's talking to you constantly, and it won't quit, and everything you try to do to remedy the situation doesn't work. Um, you know, I tried turning it off, turning it back on again, um, closing that page, closing my browser. I mean, I tried everything, and then every time I would try and boot it back up again, here this um, pop-up comes back again, and it's telling you, you know, your computer's been infected by this virus, call this number, um, and, you know, there was nothing I could do, so finally I called the number, and, um, and they made it made it stop yelling at me <laughs> that was that was the first thing um, but they wouldn't they wouldn't do anything until I gave them my credit card number and um, sent them a payment so I did that um, and even though the whole time I was doing it I knew I should be doing it I had no other choice I felt like at that time and so um, so I did give them my credit card number. They took over the computer. They um, started making some changes on on things. You know, you can see. You know, when somebody when you give somebody permission to take over your computer, it pops up on a little screen and they show you all these terrible malicious files that they're deleting. Well, really, that was just their ping that they were um, that they were using on your computer to make this fire this um, pop up keep pinging. So, um, so they were correcting something that they had caused, <laughs> um, but it made it look like that they were correcting a, a virus. Um, and so, as I was talking to them, I real, you know, I, I knew that what they were doing was a scam. And so, as soon as they stopped the problem that that was had taken over my computer, I said, "Okay, I know you guys are a scam. I'm going to report you." And so I want you to credit my, um, to give me credit back on my credit card for the money I just gave you. And of course he said, no, I can't do that. And I said, well, I need to talk to your supervisor. And so he let me talk to someone else. And finally, after several threats, um, they did tell me that they would credit the money back. And so um, I did end up getting, they said it's gonna take three days for it to credit on your credit card. Just. Um, you know, we'll we'll get it done. So I waited two days, and the and the credit was back on my credit card. So they yeah. did they did credit the money back, um, but in the meantime, I had notified the scam tracker at Better Business Bureau, and um, let them know that this was going on. And um, so I guess embarrassment, <laughs> yeah, huge, big time, um, and I can understand why um, people would fall for it and then be embarrassed to report it. So it is important not to fall for it, not, not to be embarrassed to report it when it does happen. Um, and as Sally said, just unplug the computer, take it to somebody reliable who can 
make that um, pop-up go away. I do have an antivirus. I do have an up-to-date firewall on my computer, but somehow that pop-up got through on a, on a website that I was looking at. So um, if, if what I went through and what I'm saying today can help anyone else, um, it's been worth it, but um, I, I just wanted to, to support this effort to um, get the word out to others that even if you think you're smart and savvy, you can, you can get scammed. So you ended up actually not losing money then? I did not lose any money because they did credit my card. They had my credit card number. I changed my, I got a new credit card after that um, and uh, got a different antivirus and firewall from my computer um, and have not had any problems since. But did they talk about Microsoft too? They did. They talked, well, the pop-up says Microsoft, but when you call them, it's, as she said, it's, it's Microtech. Okay. And so I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't legitimate. And you changed passwords, that sort of thing. I ch yeah, I changed everything after you know after I got off the phone with them. I I actually changed um, all my passwords and and um, got a different antivirus and um, and and uh, and then took my computer in and had it um, had it scanned for for malware. And they haven't called back or sent you other messages since no. the last you heard of them. No, that was the last I heard of them. Any other what, what, what advice would you pass along, or lessons learned, or things like that? You know, we, our computers are so important to us these days, and I use my computer a lot. I work with a lot of nonprofit organizations. I work with, um, you know, I just I do a lot of work on my computer, um, and kind of feel lost without it. And when something takes over, some over your computer, that's such a big part of your daily work. Um, it's a real um, temptation to go along with it just to fix the problem and I would say just don't do it <laughs> um, and as Sally said unplug disconnect take your computer to someone reliable who can fix it for you um, and don't go along with the scam Can you, can you spell your first and last name for us? It's J A N E C E. My last name's Molhoff, M O L L H O F F. You just weren't on the list here. Right. Sure. <laughs> I wasn't able edition. to get back to him until <laughs> late in the afternoon on Friday, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super. And Janice brings up, uh, I think, a very important element. And that is that the criminals are very concerned uh, with their online reputations. Uh, these companies uh, know uh, that if they refuse to give back money, uh, that's going to end up being posted. So it, as, it, it's incredible to think about, uh, but they are very concerned with managing their image. Uh, it's, it's very similar uh, to to the, the sort of scams, the ransomware. There was a time when you paid the ransom, they didn't unlock your computer, they just came after you for more money. Uh, but because this is organized crime, uh, they realized that people were engaging on social media and saying, do not pay this money, they won't unlock your computer. They made a strategic decision uh, to begin unlocking people's computers for the payment. Uh, this is a very similar situation. Uh, if, in fact, you question it, uh, and you demand a refund, it's possible that you could be dealing with a sophisticated enough organized crime group that they will refund the money. In other cases where maybe it's a lower level criminal that's operating this, clearly they're not going to give you your money back and they will use your, your uh, credit card uh, for nefarious purposes. Uh, well, and this, and this sounds like, I mean, the, the, the money that they pay is the small carrot. I mean, the big carrot is, is the access to your Mm -hmm. information and, 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 and all that and exactly. I guess the other thing too would be and it's harder to think that they're an illegitimate company if they're willing to refund your money there you go but they're in your system now yeah. you've let them in and you have I mean and obviously it is critical that if you have been impacted by this scheme whether you've reported it whether you want anybody to know about it whether you're suffering from embarrassment maybe you've lost money 
we still Im just implore you to get that computer offline and get it into a reliable, trustworthy tech support firm uh, that can take a good look at it to make sure that you don't have malware that's just sitting in the background. And I believe uh, the terminology is operating low and slow, uh, undetected, uh, looking for information uh, that can cause you much deeper harm. And this is not a crime that's limited to consumers. This is a crime that impacts businesses. Right here at the Better Business Bureau, I can't tell you the exact number, but it is a very significant number of calls I've received from individuals telling me they're with Microsoft, they've detected an issue on our system, and they need remote access. Fortunately, uh, we outsource uh, to a fantastic third-party IT firm. Uh, we also we, we immediately contact them. They assure us, uh, obviously, that's not something that you want to do, and we'll, we'll have a quick look. Now, these two cases, there's been nobody arrested or found or caught in either of the cases that, that we heard about this morning, right? No. Uh, I, there have been some isolated actions. Uh, I know that I, I believe that last, late last week uh, there, was a, there was a couple of operations that were operating within the United States and Texas that were shut down. And I think that you will occasionally see isolated incidences of that where there are connections between the firms in India that have set up uh, remote establishments here in the U.S. Um, there are some of those that are actually being investigated in our area, uh, but all of that is in process. But we don't know about these two cases, anything connected with that, anybody brought to justice no, or absolutely. arrested or whatever? No, yeah, I, I would say uh, that it's almost certain that, n that no one's been brought to justice. Any other questions? Thanks for coming.